Hey there, everybody. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Ranking the Albums. Thanks for spending some time with us today uh, as we all try to take a break from reality with uh, this coronavirus pandemic, which is, you know, all anybody's talking about and freaking out about. So I'm here to help you. 15, 20 minutes. Get away from it all. Think about, talk about some cool music, right? So today we're going to look at everyone's well maybe not favorite but everyone's one of everybody's favorite southern rockers molly hatchet who burst on the scene in 1978 with their self-titled debut album struck it big a year later with flirting with disaster they're still playing today right uh kind of a strange situation because because of you know of course they haven't had any original members in a long time, and I'm talking about original, original members from the first album or two, original lineup. Uh, we've had a lot of, I mean, you know, over the course of the years, the Southern rock genre has, God, been dealt with one loss after another. I don't think I've ever seen so many deaths among a musical genre ever as I've seen in Southern rock over the last, like, 20 years. So, you know, most of the classic members of the band are no longer with us, sadly. All right, so we've got, uh, you know, a makeshift lineup of the band that's been going on for quite a while. All right, got a couple guys who joined in the mid-'80s who basically kind of picked up the mantle of the band after all the original members were gone. They've been kind of taking it ever since. So you might have an opinion on, you know, Molly Hatchet today is no more than a glorified tribute band. I know a lot of people have that opinion. You know, I can't say that I disagree much there. Uh, I will say that... The bulk of the studio releases that the current or fairly current lineup of the band have put out have been very strong Southern rock albums, hard rock and Southern rock albums. I mean, yeah, it's not the original guys or any any of the classic guys, but you know what? The album's still pretty cool. I mean, uh, they're, you know, what you want from a good, solid Southern rock record. All right, so I'll leave it at that. Uh, you got to let you guys uh, give your opinions on what you think about Molly Hatchet today. But we're going to look at the entire discography, okay, the studio albums. And there's a bunch of them, all right? I'm going to start with my least favorite, going to go all the way to my favorites, okay? And you feel free to rank them as you like them in the comments below. Okay, so I'm going to start off here with the... Uh, and I'm, and I'm not going to include, they released two albums, which were essentially kind of covers albums, where they, you know, covered all sorts of songs, Southern Rock and not Southern Rock. I'm talking about uh, Regrinding the Axes and Southern Rock Masters from 2008, 2012. I'm not going to talk about those. Just going to talk about the all original studio albums of, you know, their own stuff. So coming in at the bottom of the list, pretty good album, though, is 2010's Justice. It's crazy that it seems like, uh, man, 10 years ago this album came out. All right, so who's in the band here, you might ask. So uh, let me get you the lineup here, guys. Bear with me a second. I know it's okay. So we got Bobby Ingram. Okay, so Bobby is the guy who basically kind of picked up the mantle of this band and ran with it. All right, so he was in Danny Joe Brown's solo band. When Danny Joe Brown came back to the band, he joined with him. Okay, so he's on lead guitar. Okay, backing vocals. He's been the main guy for many years now, over 30 Okay, uh, we got Phil McCormick on lead vocals. Phil, I believe, God, is Phil still with us today? I think Phil has also left us, right? Phil is gone. Uh, John Galvin on keyboards and backing vocals. John has also been in the band. I think he joined with Bobby or maybe a little bit before, so he's been on keyboards for quite a long time. Uh, Dave Lubeck on lead guitar. Also the late Dave Lubeck. Uh, he was uh, an original founding member. Uh, Tim Lindsay on bass and Sean Beamer on drums. Okay, so this was the lineup for this album as of 2010. Uh, it's a strong album. All right, it's you know got the multi guitars and you know hard rock and songs, lots of slide guitars. It's, it's pretty pretty good album, I think. Um, well, I'm trying to remember what some of their best. A Vengeance is a cool tune on here. The title track is always good. They in the later part of their career, they would always have their title tracks late in the album, and they'd always be like these long epics to feature long guitar solos. So here it's very similar. Uh, Flying Wings of Angels is cool. Uh, been to Heaven, Been to Hell. You know, some some solid stuff. It's a solid record. I don't think any of these albums suck by any means. I think they're all pretty good. And I know when I when I would get I, whenever I got one of them, I would was pretty into them. All right. So here we got Devil's Canyon is going to be next. Uh, Devil's Canyons from 1996. Okay. 
Uh, what else we got? Uh, they do a, a remake of uh, Dreams I'll Never See on here. Uh, the song The Journey is quite good. Uh, Down from the Mountain. Rolling Thunder. Rolling Thunder is very good. Devil's Canyon, the title track, is also pretty good. Uh, let's see what we got for the lineup on this particular one. If I can get the booklet out. And again, you got all this great kind of like Frazetta-inspired artwork on all of these. Uh, let's see. You know, it might be easier if I just go click on the page here. All right, so we got, uh, so this has got Danny Joe Brown. Actually, no, this has got Phil McCormick. All right, it's weird. Go to the Wikipedia page. It says Danny Joe Brown, lead vocals credited, but doesn't appear on the album. All right, so we got Phil McCormick on vocals, uh, Bobby Ingram on uh, guitars, slide guitars, Brian Bassett, all right, the very good Brian Bassett on guitars, John Galvin on keyboards, uh, Andy McKinney on bass, and Matt Crawford on drums. Okay, so pretty, pretty solid stuff there. Coming in next, uh, I'm going to go with Warriors of the Rainbow Bridge. And uh, Warriors of the Rainbow Bridge came out in 2005. Yeah, that's it right there. So this was uh, their release on SPV Records. And I believe this album came out, this um, was when Bobby's wife, I believe, was very sick. Uh, but this got the Son of the South, very strong song on here. Uh, the Rainbow Bridge, the title track. Really good, lengthy rocker. Uh, Hell Has No Fury, Get In The Game, uh, Roadhouse Boogie, pretty cool. Another solid album, you know. Uh, Kingdom of 12, coming out in 2000. Again, great cover art on all these. All right, so basically the same same lineup, pretty sure. Uh, you know, McCormick, Ingram, McCormick, Galvin. McKinney, Bassett, and Sean Shannon. Okay, on drums here. There's a look at the guys at the time. All right. Another good Southern Rock record. You know, these guys were throughout, like, the 90s and the 2000s doing big business in Germany. I mean, I think they basically made Germany their second home and selling out big crowds there, selling records, just playing there all the time and, you know, could barely get arrested here. It's kind of sad, right? Uh, they come here, they play tiny, tiny clubs, but over there, the big deal. So uh, that's what's coming in next. All right, next up for me is going to be Silent Reign of Heroes uh, from 1998. Again, another cool cover. If you love like, like Conan the Barbarian stuff, uh, this has got uh, Mississippi Moondog, World of Trouble. Uh, they do a remake of Fall of the Pacemakers on here. Do a remake of Saddle Tramp. All right, from Charlie Daniels Band. Uh, what else? Dead and Gone. Blue Thunder. Again, good, hard, rocking Southern rock. I dig it. I dig these albums. Again, you know, whether you want to call it Molly Hatchard or not, I know a lot of people just won't accept it, but, uh, you know. Lightning Strikes Twice from 1989. I believe, if I'm not mistaken... This is the last album with Danny Joe Brown. Yeah, so here you got um, Riff West on bass guitar. You got John Galvin on keyboards. Dwayne Rollin on lead guitar. Dwayne, of course, is an original member. Danny Joe Brown on vocals. Bobby Ingram on guitars. And Bruce Crump on drums. So they, here you've got three original members, okay, with the two newer guys. And this, what did I say? This was uh, 1989. Uh, you know, good album. All right. Okay, next up, all right, so we're going to go with um, The Deed Is Done, which is right there. Deed Is Done was from 1984. Uh, you know, for me, The Deed Is Done is kind of jumping on the ZZ Top bad wagon. I, I, there's, there's some really good tunes on here, but I think a lot of the kind of southern rock or blues rock bands were kind of taking that cue from what ZZ Top were doing, all right? Not that there's anything necessarily wrong with that, but it's just like a kind of formula, not a very original formula. But, uh, you know, it's got the Satisfied Man was kind of their hit on this album. Uh, what else? Backstabber, pretty cool tune. Uh, Stone in Your Heart, Heartbreak Radio. You know, an okay album. Pretty good. Familiar sounding, you know, kind of almost mid-80s slick, but, you know, I kind of dig it. Uh, next up after that, we're going to go with Take No Prisoners, which is right here. Take No Prisoners is, of course, the second album with Jimmy Farrar and last album with Jimmy Farrar on vocals. Uh, it's got Bloody Reunion on it, uh, Long Tell Sally, Lost Control, Lady Luck, Power Play, Don't Mess Around, 
All right. Not nearly as good as the Beating the Odds album, which came before it, but I still think a pretty solid record uh, with Jimmy on vocals. Coming in at number four, I'm going to go with No Guts, No Glory. All right. So, of course, you got Danny Joe back in the saddle here. I, I kind of I like dig this album. I, I like it better than its predecessor. Uh, this has got uh, Fall of the Peacemakers, which is a terrific song. Easily a top 10 Molly Hatchet song. Uh, Under the Gun, On the Prowl, What Does It Matter, Ain't Even Close. A little bit of Sweet Dixie, too. You know, very good early 80s Southern Rock record. You know, at a time where Southern Rock was kind of, you know, not really all the rage like it was a couple years before. All right, I kind of, I toyed with putting this one at number two. I really dig this album, and I saw them live on this tour. So it means a lot to me. It was the, actually the only time I've ever seen Molly Hatchet, believe it or not. Beating the odds. Danny Joe Brown out. Big man Jimmy Farrar in. Title track is killer. Double talker. The Rambler is excellent. A unsung southern rock anthem in my opinion sailor penthouse pauper the needle leave you dead and gone great song few and far between get her back poison pen this is a really good hard rocking album with blazing triple lead guitar action going on here so of course you know this is this is the uh, the classic lineup of the band minus danny joe brown with jimmy farrar in his place so here we've got and i'll give you the whole full kit and caboodle here on the lineup so we've got uh, jimmy farrar on vocals dave lubeck on guitar steve holland on guitar Dwayne Rollin on guitar banner thomas on bass and bruce crump on drums so uh a really powerhouse lineup there but you know of course gets a little bit overshadowed by the original lineup which is basically all those same guys with danny joe brown i'm gonna go with number two i'm gonna go with the debut from 1978 uh, as far as debuts goes, this is a really, really good one. And I go, I know these guys kind of took, um, you know, they were big fans of Skinner. They were buddies with the guys from Skinner. So a lot of similarities between these guys and Leonard Skinner. Uh, I always thought the Hatcher were a little bit heavier, all right? But uh, similar formula. You got, you know, their classic Bounty Hunter on here. All right, Gator Country, of course, a rousing, rousing song. Oh, Gator Country. Got to love those vocals of Danny Joe Brown, right? Uh, what else we got here? The Creeper, The Price You Pay, Dreams I'll Never See. Dun, 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 dun. Awesome. Uh, Cheating Woman, Trust Your Old Friend, Top to Bottom, Very, Very Strong. A very good hard rocking, party rocking, southern rock album. Uh, of course, number one, I'm going to go with Flirting with Disaster. You know, it's their most well known album. Uh, it's just, it's, you know. Top to bottom, pretty damn strong. You know, you got Whiskey Man kicking it all off. You got the title track, perennial FM rock radio favorite. You got uh, It's All Over Now, One Man's Pleasure, Killer, Duke City, another really good song. Uh, Boogie No More, great tune, good rock and gun smoke, long time. And of course, uh, Let the Good Times Roll. Come on, baby, let the good times roll. I always liked his kind of <laughs> southern drawl, man. He had nobody had a voice like Danny Joe Brown, except for, of course, Phil McCormick, who filled filled his place in the band um they made them both rest in peace so uh, there you have it uh molly hatchet also want to mention their live album which came out in uh, what year was that um 1981 right now double trouble live 1985 although they had uh, they had a live album released later on from stuff from earlier than that but uh, double trouble live was there 1985 live album Quite good. Uh, if you also haven't heard it, check out Live at the Agora Ballroom from Atlanta, Georgia in 1979. That's also been released, I don't know, officially or unofficially, but uh, that's pretty damn good, too. So let's uh, let's recap. All right. Coming at number one, Flirting with Disaster. Coming at number two, Molly Hatchet, self-titled. Coming in at number three, we were beating the odds, we were beating the odds, we were beating the odds again. Coming in at number four, No Guts, No Glory. Coming in at number five, we're going to go with Take No Prisoners. Coming in at number six, The Deed Is Done. Coming in at number seven, we're going to go with Lightning Strikes Twice. Number eight, we're going to go with Silent Rain of Heroes. Number nine, we're going to go with Kingdom of XII or Kingdom of Twelve. I lost my track. Number 10, Warriors of the Rainbow Bridge, whatever the hell number we're on. I lost track. Uh, Devil's Canyon is up next. And coming at last, but I dig it, is uh, Justice. 
Again, I think all these latter period ones are all equally pretty strong, solid. I think more people, at least here in this country, need to give them a chance because I know a lot of people have a hard time dealing with bands that don't have any original members left. But if you just kind of forget that for a second and say, I just want to hear a good, somewhat modern Southern rock record that kicks ass, there you have it, right? Those are all pretty good. So anyway, I dig them. May not be as good as the classic, classic stuff, but it's still, it's very listenable and enjoyable, I think. And if I just, you know, don't worry about it, it's like, is this all original Molly Hatchet or is it just really good Southern rock with the name Molly Hatchet? You know, that's what it is, right? So anyway, visit us on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're on the mighty YouTube. You know how it goes. Rank them as you like them, all right? So list your top five, your top ten, rank them all, whatever. Tell us what you like about Molly Hatchet or don't like about Molly Hatchet, right? Because, of course, this is supposed to be a discussion amongst all of us about these bands and these albums, what we love about them, what we don't, and all that kind of stuff. If you don't like Molly Hatchet, hey, what can I tell you? If you love them, start talking about them, all right? Remember, we all hear these albums differently, so there's no right or wrong answer here about which one should be higher than the other, all right? No right or wrong answer, so I respect everybody's opinions. Uh, once again, to everybody in the world who is uh, trying to get through reality these days with all that's going on with this coronavirus uh, nonsense, um, be safe, be healthy, take care of yourself and your friends and loved ones. All right, we're going to get through this, so uh, hopefully I've provided you with uh, 15 or so minutes of a little diversion from all the insanity. All right, so start uh, you know, trying to fill your day with music listening to it, talking about it, loving it, all that kind of good stuff, because that music is the best remedy for everything that ails us, all right? So we'll see you guys real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.